All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise and honor and glory be to Yahweh. Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rukha Kodash. And I want to say double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that rule well. And blessings to the hopeful elect out there teaching this word in all sincerity and truth. In the hopes that we may edify and feed the lambs of Yahweh Shai, especially in these last days. All right, and, um, you know, we are indeed in the last days. And just like the scripture says that, you know, our salvation, you know, as we know who's going to give us salvation. When I say us, I'm talking about, you know, the elect of the nation of Israel, Lord willing, you know, we are, you know, that's why we say the hopeful elect, you know, because we don't know, you know, if we are definitely of the elect, but, you know, the elect are going to be doing the work. And if we're doing the work and we believe and we're doing the work in sincerity, then there's a good chance that we are of the elect. And if we are, <clears throat> you know, Yahweh Shai is coming back to get us, you know, um, and not too much longer now. So we just got to just hang in there, you know, and pray through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. You know, today we're in the midst of the Day of Atonement. You know, we're, um, you know, we don't eat anything for 24 hours, you know, sundown to sundown, man. And we afflict our souls and, you know, we're rehearsing the righteous acts. <clears throat> you know, even though, you know, the bloodshed of the lamb, which is Yahweh Shai, was shed for our sins. You know, we still keep the day of atonement as we rehearse the righteous acts and we afflict our souls. Because, um, you know, the Lord, you know, um, like someone that's contrite. You know, that's in the scriptures, man. Um, <clears throat> let's see if I can get that one first. <clears throat> this is um, I, uh, Psalm chapter 34, verse 18. Um, in fact, let me start from um, 17. The righteous cry, and the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, heareth. <clears throat> and you know, you know, this precept is going to tie into my lesson really because, um, you know, we're sighing and crying to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, which be the name of the Heavenly Father for His only begotten Son in these last days to get us up out of this situation that we're in, which is captivity right now, underneath, you know, the so called white man, biblically known as the Edomites, you know, that, that red. That red devil taking peace from the earth, even though they call themselves white, you know? White represents purity. And there's nothing pure about Esau, man. There's nothing pure about... I mean, he might be pure in wickedness, <laughs> if you will. If you can say that, you know, because um, he's created to be just that. He's created to be the wicked, you know? Um, <clears throat> starting with the... Uh, Wicked uh, banking elites. You're talking about the Rothschilds, Rockefellers, DuPonts, Oppenheimers, you know, the elites of Esau, Edom, <clears throat> they have the power of the earth. Okay. Um, and the Lord is about to stump that out, man. But the Lord says he has our righteous cry. It says the righteous cry of the Lord. The righteous cry and the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, heareth and delivereth them out of all their troubles, man. So. We're about to be delivered out of our troubles, you know, and the main trouble that's or the troublesome period is going to be Jacob's trouble, despite what you got some wacky pastors out there that want to <clears throat> change up the doctrine, talk about how there ain't going to be no time of Jacob's trouble, <laughs> you know. I mean, you've heard some real bugged out doctrines out there, man, like Jacob's trouble is just for the. You know, um, it's just for the other nations. I mean, what the hell, man? It, it, Jacob's trouble means Jacob's trouble. I mean, Jake, and, Jake is going to be going through a time of trouble, man. That's in Jeremiah chapter 30, you know? Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. You know? And that time is fast approaching. But the Lord said that, look, man, he hears us and he's going to deliver us out of all our troubles, you know? It says the Lord <clears throat> Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and save as such as be of a contrite spirit. 
You know, so the Lord likes us to be, you know, contrite, man. This is what the Lord, you know, um, he demands of us, you know. Um, let's go into that word. Um, see if we can look up the definition of the word contrite here. <clears throat> the word contrite means feeling or expressing remorse at the recognition that one has done wrong. And this is why ultimately, you know, we have that mindset of Micah 7 and 9. As we catch hell in his truth, as we serve the Lord, you know, we're supposed to apply that scripture, Sirach 2 and 1, my son, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Because ultimately, when I say we have to apply that scripture, it's because we're feeling a sense of remorse and recognition that we've done wrong against the Heavenly Father. All right. And Micah 7 and 9 says, I will bear the indignation of the Lord, right? <clears throat> Let's get that scripture real quick. Micah chapter 7. Micah chapter 7 and 9, I will bear the indignation of the Lord, Yahweh Basham, Yahweh Shai, because I have sinned against him. Now, if you acknowledge that you've sinned against the Lord, you know, that would make you contrite, you know? You have a sense of remorse, you know, for transgressing against the Lord. And this is why we're rehearsing the righteous acts, such as what we're in right now, the Day of Atonement. And we're afflicting our souls, you know? Because we're, re we're recognizing you know, that we've transgressed against the Heavenly Father. And the Lord likes that, you know. Okay, the wicked of our people, they're too proud to even acknowledge that. They're too proud to have any form of remorse because they don't believe in Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai. They don't believe in his fear. Okay, they don't believe that they, they are to fear Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai. But they will learn the fear of the Lord. And then the process, that's going to serve to magnify the Lord's name. When the time of Jacob's trouble hits, then people are going to be saying, look, man, Ed, look, this is too, what's going on on the earth is, is too, it's too raw. It's going to be hard for people to bear. That's when they're going to realize, hold on a minute, man. Hey, God's angry, you know? Because if you notice, whenever there's calamities on the earth, people are always quick to call upon the most high. All right. <clears throat> oh God, oh God, oh God. When shit going, when shit's going wrong. Scripture says in a day of prosperity, there's a forgetfulness of affliction. You know, loosely paraphrasing. <coughs> in fact, let's get that scripture as well. Uh, day of prosperity. Let me see if, if it just comes up with this, it might. Yeah. So rock. 11 and 25 in a day of prosperity there is a forgetfulness of affliction and you know a lot of these people are out here um especially the wicked of our people they ain't seeking after the lord they ain't showing no remorse there's a forgetfulness of affliction man you know burying their head in the sand you know partying and bullshitting writing in writing chambering and drunkenness you know pretty much in, you know, in a celebratory mindset where we got nothing to really celebrate, man, you know? Because ultimately, the scripture says the heart of the wise is in the house of mourning, but the heart of fools is in the house of mirth. So we're not really in that mirthed out spirit, man. Again, you know, we're sighing, we're in the spirit of sighing and crying. But again, in the day of prosperity, there's a forgetfulness of affliction, you know? And we're still being afflicted, you know? But Jake ain't seeing that because... You know, some of our people have sold out, you know. And as they've sold out for that corruptible crown, what are they receiving? Their consolation, you know. Their little piece of the pie in Esau's kingdom, which they had to do nothing but wickedness in order to obtain. You know, certain celebrities and musicians and certain, super, you know, all these superstars out here. And what have they had to do behind the scenes in order to get that corruptible crown? Real horrible acts, you know. Acts of sodomy, you know, acts of allowing the um, the so-called white man to have complete dominance over them <clears throat> for sexual pleasure, you know. It says, and in a day of affliction, there is no more remembrance of prosperity. You see that? So when the day of affliction comes, that's when people are going to really be quick to call upon the most high because they're going to be like, hold on a minute, man. What was I doing? Yeah, that's why the scripture says the same must know it after death by pain. Okay, so let's go back to uh, 
<clears throat> Psalms 34 and 17, the righteous cry and the Lord heareth. So the Lord, Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, hears our cry, man. Just like in the time of Egypt, all right? When you go to Egypt, uh, the third chapter, and the seventh verse, you know, because we was in hardcore bondage under the Egyptians, all right? That was a time of heavy affliction. And the Lord, Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai, said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt. All right, and what's the modern day Egypt? All right, America. All right, America is the modern day Egypt. All right, and you're going to find that out in this lesson as well. We're going to go into a little bit of, um, I mean, why do they have the, uh, the, the pyramid on the back of the dollar bill? You might say, well, what does a pyramid have to do with, with America? Well, it's spiritually known as Sodom and Egypt. Okay. And I've heard their cry, there goes the sighing and the crying, right? By reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrow. So you think, and there's nothing new under the sun. The Lord heard and saw our affliction in ancient Egypt, and the Lord saved us out of that. But this time, the Lord's only going to save a remnant, you know, the elect, the true believers, all right, who are seriously and sincerely sighing and crying unto the Lord. See, we're like the, the widow in Luke, the 18th chapter. That's constantly crying out to Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, you know. And when you go into the Luke, Luke the eighteenth chapter, that was dealing with the unjust judge, okay, who eventually did something because of the continual complaining of the widow. So how much more so a just power that we serve and fear and worship? All right. Now, I made a statement. I said, you know, America is um, the modern day Egypt. There is many scriptures we can go to prove that. Uh, we can hold Isaiah 19, we can hold um, also Isaiah uh, 30, is it 30? Yep, and also the main one we want to go to is Revelation 11, which I'm going to get first. <clears throat> and it reads, Revelation chapter 11 verse 8, And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which that great city is talking about what? America, Babylon the Great, right? Which spiritually is called Sodom. Uh, we spoke about acts of sodomy, all right? And they pushed that heavy over there in Babylon, man. And Babylon goes back to the Hebrew word, babal, which means confusion, all right? Because over there in America, <clears throat> and stemming from America, you're having nothing but confusion being pushed out throughout the earth, you know? But now these, these nations are waking up to, the, to that wine, you know, and the wrath of her fornication, you know? Dealing with the whore that rideth upon the beast, spoken of in Revelation 17. The nations are drunken of that wine. But now the nations are mad, you know? They don't want nothing to do, you know, with the West. And that's why you're seeing mo a lot of these uh, Middle Eastern countries, you know, like Iran, Saudi Arabia, they're teaming up with like Russia, which is all biblical prophecy. But ultimately, you know, the American hegemony, you know, is pretty much being brought to nothingness, man. All right? We're in a time now where biblical prophecy is speaking louder than ever and the weak are standing up to those that were strong. Jo uh, Joel 3 and 9 goes into that. And I know I'm kind of all over the place, you know? But just um, bear with me and I pray this is edifying. But the point is, America is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt. Okay? Notice it says Sodom and Egypt. What's Egypt got to do with America? Well, spiritually, it's known as Sodom and Egypt. That's why they have, again, I mentioned, that's why they have the pyramid on the back of the dollar bill. See, the fact that they put the pyramid on the back of their dollar bill, that shows that Esau ain't even got even, ain't even in control. This is all done by through the spirit. Man's goings out of the Lord. The Lord had them put the pyramid on the back of the dollar bill. That's a telltale sign right here. All right, and this is talking about modern day Egypt. All right. <clears throat> And the Lord even said that we should go into Egypt again with ships, you know, in Deuteronomy 28, you know, in 68. Okay, and America, when you go into that word, um, well, let's go into Deuteronomy. Okay, and this is how you can also prove all the curses. You start from verse 15, you go through real out all these curses. You know, the Lord said that these curses were going to be upon our people for a sign. And that's how we know that this is talking about our people. You know, we're the chosen people, man. The Israelites, you know. 
He said, and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. All right. You got um, so-called African-Americans, right? And they, that they call you over there, African-Americans. <clears throat> Even over here in the UK, you got black Caribbean and you got all these bywords. But no, we're the Israelites, man. But ultimately, how did we get here? We got to these places through cargo slave ships. So when you go into this word Egypt, I don't know if they've changed it on the blue letter, but the root word, the word there should be uh, Matazayim in the, in the, uh, there you go, in the Hebrew. Mizraim or Matazayim. Okay, but then when you go into a root word, it should be, uh, the root word should be Tazawar. There you go. See, you go all the way to the root word, it's Tazawar. All right, Taz of War, yeah, Taz of War, and it says to bind. All right, so so Egypt is synonymous with bondage. It's symbolic of us being in bondage. Okay, it says to bind, to besiege, to confine, to cramp. And weren't we cramped in on them ships, man? All right, weren't we cramped in on them ships? Let's look at the cargo slave ships conditions. Uh, slave. Slave ships. Let's see if we can get some images on here. Look at that, man. And you see that? That's how Jake was was forced to, you know, be transported. You know, cramped together on them slave ships, man. All right. You got the storerooms. On, see the storeroom there to the left of the screen, and then pretty much they didn't waste no fucking space. And you had Jake shitting and pissing on themselves. You know, with yokes of iron placed around their neck, chained up. Yeah. A plan of lower deck with stowage of 292 slaves. What is that? 130 of these being stowed under the shelves as shown in the figure figure B and figure 5 or S. I'm not too sure. You know, the writing's a little bit. But there you go, you got the set, you know, they separated and segregated them. You had the gun room, you know, to make sure that Jake was in check. So that the slaves didn't revolt. They had the gun room, they had the, the, the men, the boys. Alright, and the women. They had sections for them, man. This is quite a very in-depth diagram. I've seen this one before, but it's you know, I haven't visited it in a while. But this is how you know this is dealing with our people, man. Alright, because this didn't happen. To any other nation Like on this level Like it happened to our people Like You know you so called Negroes man Alright So uh, You know that's testimony That bears a testimony To who we are as a people man Alright To confine To secure To shut in Besiege Close up Shut up To show hostility to To be an adversary Treat as a foe You see that Man this goes into a lot This root word here man <coughs> You know and the scripture says he got Esau that wants to complain about how we keep bringing this up, but hey, you know, you know why he's complaining because that shameful spewing is upon his glory. You know, that shameful spewing is upon his glory, man. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships, by the way where I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you. You see that? No man shall redeem us, man. That's why we need Yahweh Shai. This is the time that we're in. <clears throat> Excuse me. You know? And this is why we need Yahweh Shai to save us, man. And he's coming back to save his elect. Okay? Because Esau, you know, he's shown us nothing but hostility. And he's still showing us hostility to this day. All right, remember the scriptures speak about that perpetual hatred in Amos 1 and 11. That he's shown unto us as a people. This is Jeremiah chapter 31 and 11. For the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, have redeemed Jacob. All right, Jacob's name was interchangeable with Israel, right? And Israel uh, means... Uh, he prints power, all right? Or he is a son of God and ransomed him from the hand of him that was stronger than he. 
So Esau's stronger than us right now. You know, that's why we need Yahweh Shai to come back and save us. You know, we actually, the Lord set us up to actually need a savior. Imagine that. Through the spirit, the Lord set us up to need a savior. That means that we can't even save ourselves. So by that alone, that lets you know that we have to be in a contrite spirit. We have to be remorseful because guess what? If we're not remorseful, then the Lord ain't sending his son to come and save us, man. We have to be. The scripture says, kiss the son lest he be angry with thee. All right. But you got Jake out here that want to, you know, they want to trust in this society. You know, they want this place to continue going on. All right. Even though this devil has got plans for you. All right. And he wants to chip you. You know, he wants to slay Jacob, okay? He's showing that perpetual hatred, man. And, and you best believe when they set up them concentration camps and them torture chambers, Jake's going to realize that what the prophets out there were saying and warning them about was true. Oh, the scripture says that. Then shall they know that a prophet have been among them. But you know, Jake's hard-headed, all right? The Lord hasn't given them the mindset of them to believe. Isaiah chapter 30 and 1. Woe to the rebellious children, saith the Lord, Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, that take counsel but not of me. Yeah, they ain't seeking after the Lord. All right. That's why Yahweh Shai said, Ye of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do, man. You know, they're slave to sin, basically. They're, they are, they're wholehearted, they're in that do as thou wilt spirit. Okay. They take counsel, but not of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, and that cover with a covering, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin. You see that? So Jake's all, they, they're gone, man. The scripture says the uh, uh, ox know of his owner, and the ass his master's crib. So like Isaiah 1 and 3, right? All right, let's read it. The ox, Isaiah chapter 1, verse 3, the ox know of his owner, and the ass his master's crib, but Israel doth not know. My people doth not consider. So if you don't know, if you're not in, in the know, all right, the scripture says my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. And this is why Jake out here is going to be destroyed. It's going to get mowed down by Esau's sword. And Esau is sharpening that sword. And that's what we're supposed to prophesy about. Ezekiel 21 and 9. Esau's blessing is the sword. It says our sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, iniquity a seed of evildoers. Children that are corruptors, they have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked, provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away backward. Yeah, they're backwards, man. And here it is. You've got the ox and the ass, two stubborn animals, but they both know where their master's crib is, but, crib is, but Israel don't know, you know? They've gone away backwards. All right? Why should you be stricken anymore? You will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick. And the whole heart faint. And the Hebrew word for heart is love, which means the mind. You know, so Jake's just gone in the mind, man. Jake's finished. And this is why, verse 2 in Isaiah 30, that walk to go down into Egypt and have not asked at my mouth to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. You see that, man? So they're trusting in the shadow of Egypt. So the modern day Egypt is America. Okay. <clears throat> wow look at this one so i got the word shadow right and the hebrew word is tazal i believe it is it says shadow or shade now what's a shadow if you stand in front of the, sh of the sun you know you're going to be blocking certain you know, I don't claim to know how all that the light spectrum works and all of that shit arguing, but if you stand out in the sunlight, you're gonna see your shadow being cast on the ground. So that's like an after image of you on the floor. You know? Because it's like an absence of light, right? That's that's so basically, you know, the shadow of Egypt, you know? America tapes takes it's just a modern it's just a modern day Egypt. Okay? And they actually um have certain cities in America that are named after Egyptian towns, like Memphis is one, for example, you know? They even had pyramids built over there in Babylon the Great. They, again, they have the pyramid on the back of the dollar bill. And why do they have that, all right? Because it's spiritually known as Sodom and Egypt. And then, on the top of the dollar bill, you can see Anoit Coeptus, <clears throat> all right? Which means uh, he favors our enterprise or undertakings, being crowned with success, 
a novus order seclorium, all right, which means new world order. So they have a new world order agenda, man. All right, and they have the pyramid on the back of the dollar bill. The Roman numerals at the bottom that you can that you can see there that add up to seventeen seventy six, I believe, which goes back to the birth of the Illuminati. All right, so this is and they they're the illuminated ones on the left hand side. Where the illuminate illuminated ones on the right hand side. All right, and this is how you know this is a big giveaway that this America is spiritually known as Sodom in Egypt. Okay, because why do they have the pyramid and the all-seeing eye on the back of the dollar bill, man? What's that got to do with America? Because it's spiritually Sodom and Egypt. <clears throat> all right, it says a shadow symbolic of, all right, symbolic of transitoriness of life. A shadow shade as a projection. You see that? So the shadow of Egypt. So you Jakes out here trusting in the shadow of Egypt, man. And guess what? Ancient, in ancient Egypt, hey, we were crying out and the Lord heard us, man. So what do you think the Lord's going to do now? Okay. So this is our faith, man. The Lord's going to put a stop to this. Right? When, especially when this happens. Now, this is a future prophecy, right? It says, you can see in the subheadings, a message to Egypt. All right, this is talking about modern day Egypt, right? Which is America. It says, Isaiah chapter 19 and 1, the burden of Egypt. Behold, the Lord... Yahweh Ba Hashem Yahweh Shai Ride up upon a swift cloud So that's how the Lord's coming back Alright And he ain't You know he ain't actually com Coming back on an actual cloud This is symbolic of You know Sometimes when the scriptures speak about Cloud or a chariot It's talking about You know The so called UFOs That's how Yahweh Shai is coming back And he's coming back on a thick um, A giant cloud at That a father's ship You know Just like Ezra described it In 2nd Ezra's 13th chapter he described it as being like a mountain that he couldn't see the end of. So the Lord's going to ride upon that swift cloud, man, and shall come into Egypt. You see, America. And this is why you're seeing more and more sightings of the so-called UFOs pop up all over the place. Because guess what? The Lord is showing signs, man. Didn't it? The scripture said that there are going to be signs in the heavens to know what time we're in. All right. And that's a curse unto Esau, Zechariah the fifth chapter. It's a curse that goeth forth over the face of the whole earth. And they're about to enter into the house of the thief. And Esau is a thief. He actually stole us. Yeah, this is, a, this is evidence of him being a thief. You actually stole men, women, and children. Men, boys, men. Uh, women, boys, men. You see that? You stole people, chained them up, transported them from one place to another, and made them work for nothing. You know? And then you want to talk about fucking emancipation, which the emancipation just means to transfer. You know? And then you just, you know, why do you think, Jake, you got nothing but Israelites all up in the, um, the jail system, man? Because it's all by design. Okay? What was that documentary that was going on, on Netflix? I think it was the 13th Amendment. Okay? Jake getting locked up for the smallest things, man. Getting super sentences for the smallest things. And that's all by design to keep our people oppressed. So we're still in captivity, man. And the scriptures say, the captive exile hasteneth that he may be loosed. All right? So we're still captives right now. Uh, what proves that? Let's go to Baruch... Um, Get, go ahead and get Baruch. Baruch 2 and um, 30. It says, For I knew that they would not hear me because it is a stiff necked people. All right? Yeah, the ox and the ass, right? Remember, we just went into that in Isaiah, the first chapter. It's a stiff necked people, right? But in the land of their captivities, they shall remember themselves. And who's remembering ourselves, man? Hey, Jake, you know, starting with the elect. You know, the elect of the nation of Israel are waking up, remembering ourselves, we are. And shall know that I am the Lord, Yahweh their power, for I will give them an heart and ears to hear. Remember we spoke about the heart, that every man's heart faint, which the Hebrew word for heart is the love. No, the Lord's going to give us the, the mind, right? And the ears to hear this truth. And that's happening in these last days. And they shall praise me. In the land of their captivity And think upon my name And you know That's how you know That the name is important Why would it be in the scriptures If it's not important That we are supposed to call upon The name of the Lord 
All right, so in order for us to be saved, we have to know the name of the Lord. That's key. And even my phone pinged off just to, you know, just to clarify that. You know, we have to know the name of the Lord. All right. Uh, Acts chapter 4 and 12 goes into that, you know, it's about salvation. We have to know the name of the Lord. Uh, it reads, Acts chapter 4 verse 12, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. So we have to know the name of the Lord to call upon in order to be saved. And the name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh, and His Son's name is Yahweh Shai, man. Okay, so let me read that part again in Baruch 2 and 32. And they shall praise me in the land of their captivity and think upon my name. Let's go to Baruch 3 and 8. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity, yeah, where thou hast scattered us for a reproach and a curse. Remember we spoke about the curses? Didn't the Lord say he was going to scatter us? So come on, man, you can't get around this. This is, this is our people. We've been scattered because we... We transgress the Heavenly Father, man, so the Lord is punishing us, man. And therefore, we're showing remorse, that contrite spirit. All right. Deuteronomy 28 and 64. Let's read another curse. And the Lord shall scatter thee. Yahweh Bashem Yahweh shall scatter thee among all people. Right? From the one end of heaven to the other, and there shall serve and there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. You got all these Israelites all up into Buddhism and Islam And we're going to see what's going to happen in the end Are you so proud about your, your false religions and that and whatever We're going to see who's going to save you You know, in the end, in these last days We're going to see where um, Muhammad is in the last days Where Buddha is All these stupid, stupid idols, man Or people that idolize, you know But this is how you know this is our people The Lord said that we're going to be scattered and then we're going to serve idols of wood and stone. Okay. And there's a scripture that mocks you Israelites that are worshipping idols of wood and stone in Jeremiah the second chapter, which I'm going to read. Um, verse 27 in Jeremiah chapter 2. It says, saying to a stock, thou art my father, and to a stone, thou hast brought me forth. For they have turned their back unto me and not their face. But in the time of their trouble. <coughs> so the time of trouble is coming, man. But in the time of your trouble, what's going to happen? They will say, arise and save us. All right. That's what Jake's going to be saying. Um, uh, Hosea 5 and 15. I will go and return unto my place until they acknowledge their offense. In their affliction, they will seek me early, right? But where are thy gods that thou hast made thee? Let them arise if they can save thee in the time of thy trouble. Right? So the Lord's mocking you. Where are you in that time of your trouble? You're going to be say, arise and save us. But where, where's your God's going to be that you've made? You know, all these idols, these stones, these carvings of wood. Where are they going to be to save you in that time? See, we worship a living power, man. He, he has a name. Okay. His name is Yahweh, And his son's name is Yahweh Shai. That's the name of the heavenly father and his son. Okay. So... Back in Baruch chapter 3 and verse 8 Behold we are yet this day in our captivity Yet this day man We're still in captivity We ain't been saved yet You got Jake talking I'm saved I'm saved Saved from what bro? You're still in captivity under your oppressors You're still having to eat polluted food Okay You're still having to be subjected to these stupid You know you, you got to raise these children In these stupid school systems Children are getting indoctrinated Okay, the scriptures speak about want of all things, man. We're going to have to go to our enemy for the want of all things. We're still in captivity, man. Esau's stronger than us. We ain't been saved. Okay, we hope that we're going to be saved. It says, where thou hast scattered us for a reproach and a curse, you know, to be and to be subject to payments, man. That's, that's our people, you know. We're under them curses, man. This bill, you got to come up, pop up out of nowhere, the unexpected. That bill, oh, you didn't get paid right from work. It's just bullshit And according to all the iniquities of our fathers Which departed from the Lord our power So that's it man, you know Those curses are upon our people man Alright So let's go back now We kind of went on a mini journey there Let's go back to Isaiah 19 Alright, so we are still in captivity man um, Spiritually Sodom and Egypt Babylon the Great 
All right, starting there. And that's where the truth came out from, man. Okay. Which is highly spiritual. And this is this is how you know that Esau is going down because the prophets are back. You know, cursing out a, a wicked kingdom of war, evil and pestilence. Jeremiah 28 and 8. The prophets were always cursing out these wicked kingdoms. All right. And this is the most wicked kingdom there has been of all. All right. So let's read again. It's Isaiah 19 and 1. The burden of Egypt. Behold the Lord. Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai rideth upon a swift cloud and shall come into Egypt. Oh, like the scripture says, behold, he cometh of clouds and every eye shall see him. Okay. That's how Yahweh Shai is coming back. On a so-called, a gigantic so-called UFO. All right, or UAP as they call it in Europe, right? Behold, he cometh with clouds, Revelation chapter 1 verse 7. I'm so excited to read this. Behold, he cometh with clouds and every eye shall see him. All right, everyone's going to see the Lord. You know, sort of like in Man of Steel with General Zod. And he made a proclamation to, the, to earth when he arrived. And he said, you're harboring one of our citizens or something like that. <laughs> you know, everyone's going to see the Lord. Because he's going to be flying on that father ship. He's going to be blotting out the sun. He's going to be, man, it's going to be a sight to behold. And I want to be there to see it. And not just see it. I want Yahweh Shai, I would love for Yahweh Shai to beam me up, man. You know, for the faith that I've shown doing this work. Lord willing, I'm of the elect. So this is our hope, Arkim. You know, we're hopeful, you know. Scriptures call us prisoners of hope, man. So let's have some hope. Yeah, it says, and they also which pierced him. So that's reincarnation. Those that pierce Yahweh Shai, they're going to be back here to receive their judgment. And I would hate to be those individuals, bro. I'll tell you that now. See, Dave, that's their lot to, to receive judgment for piercing the Lord while he was going through his, his darkest hour, you know? And all the kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him, even so a man. And, they, you know, when I think about scriptures like that, that verse that I just read, I think about Amos 5 and 18. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. If all the kindreds of the earth are going to wail because of the Lord, <clears throat> which when you go into the word well in the Greek is copto. All right, it should be copto there. <coughs> all the kindreds of the earth shall wail, right? Let's see if we get that word well. Yeah, copto. See it in the Greek. All right, and you see the third point, it says to beat one's breast for grief. All right, so these people are going to be in a state of grief out here. Let's see what that word, we can go into that word grief. The word grief, it says intense sorrow, intense. It's going to be an intense time on the earth, man. Oh, remember the scriptures described it as, the, as a day like no other since there was a nation. That's how intense the, the time is going to be on the earth, man. Now, you, you know, when you think about it, man, like... The Lord's really got these people spoiled out here to the point where they ain't expecting such an intense time to happen on the earth that's going to even eclipse the flood of Noah. Especially in these major cities. The scripture says, because of their pride, the cities shall be troubled. So you got people, you know, just, just living their life, you know, popping bottles, ordering rounds at the bar and that and whatever, and just completely, you know, you, you Israelites say you're completely, you know, uh, deluded, man. Well, the scripture says that the Lord shall send them a strong delusion that they should believe a lie. That's why the day of the Lord is going to come like a thief in the night unto them. And they're going to be in an intense sorrow. It's especially caused by someone's death. And you know what the scriptures speak about? The slain of the Lord shall be many. So there's going to be plenty of death. It says trouble or annoying. You see that word trouble, man? Grief, trouble. So that word grief there goes into trouble, man. All right, so all the kindreds of the earth shall be in a time of trouble because of him. Even so, Arman, so let it be true. So that's how the Lord's coming, man. He's coming with clouds and every eye shall see him. And the same way he went in Acts, the first chapter, is the same way he's coming back. All right, Acts chapter 1, verse 9. And when he sp had spoken these things, while they beheld, right, meaning what the disciples, they were talking with Yahweh Shai, and they beheld, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. Meaning he got beamed up into a ship. All right. 
And whilst they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which were the two angels, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same, why were they gazing into heaven? They were gazing, right? They were just staring, gazing, because guess what? It was, it was a hell of a sight. Yeah, how was I getting beamed up into a, into a ship? You know? That must have been a hell of a sight. So they were gazing up into heaven. So the angels had to say, look, why are you standing there gazing? This same Yahweh Shai, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. And Isaiah saw this. John the Revelator saw this. Ezra saw this. You had prophets that seen Yahweh Shai coming back. Habakkuk saw this. In fact, the prophet Habakkuk, when he saw Yahweh Shai coming back and getting down, he said in wrath, remember mercy. Right? Habakkuk chapter 3 verse 2. O Lord, Yahweh Yahweh I have heard thy speech and was afraid. O Lord, revive thy work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make known. In wrath, remember mercy. Okay? So this is gonna, the Lord's going to be showing, demonstrating so much wrath. All the scriptures line up with that in, um, was it Isaiah 42 or 40? That the Lord's going to destroy and devour at once. Okay, um, travailing woman. Let's see if I can get that scripture. Isaiah forty-two. <coughs> Excuse me. Isaiah chapter forty-two and um, and thirteen. The Lord Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai shall go forth as a mighty man. He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. All right? So, hey, the Lord is a man of war, right? Come on, bro. And also, Yahweh uh, Shai, he's going to be leading the charge. He's going to be bringing back Michael, the archangel, with him. That's in Daniel, the 12th chapter. You know? And Michael goes back to what? Micah Allah, which means he who is like the power. So Michael's on war too, because the Lord is a man of war. So Michael, he who is like the power, he's going to be on war as well. So it's going to be a time of intense sorrow on the earth, man. And that's when Jake going to be calling out, oh shit, that's what them, they were right. When they see <clears throat> Yahweh Shai come back with power and great glory, which I must be allowed to hold Matthew 24, because that goes all up into that. All right. That's when people are going to consider, you know, then shall they know that a prophet had been among them, man. See, we ain't concerned about those that don't believe. In the end, the Lord's going to make everyone a believer in the end, man. Because <laughs> ultimately, hey, at, at the name of Yahweh Shai, every knee shall bow, right? And every tongue shall confess. See, we're confessing the Lord ahead of schedule. All right? Um, Whoso confess me before men, whom him also will I confess before my father, which is in heaven, right? That's what the Lord said. So we're confessing, man. All right, we're showing remorse and we're confessing that Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Yahweh Shai is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Right? It says, He shall prevail against his enemies. All right? It says, He shall stir up jealousy like a man of war. He shall cry, Yeah, roar. He shall prevail against his enemies. All right? <laughs> Just read it in the NLT. It says, He shall crush all his enemies. He's going to crush you, man. All right? In fact, I like this NLT one as well. It says, the Lord will march forth like a mighty hero. Wow. Like Brightburn. You know? <laughs> you look at the end scene, the end credits closing out scene in Brightburn. You saw Br Brandon Bryce. He was taking everything out. Remember, he was always about taking the world. And that's what Superman should have been on. He should have been on General Zod's wave. You know? Send in the world engine and just fuck up everything. It says he will come out like a warrior full of fury. Look at that, man. He will shout. He will shout his battle cry and crush all his enemies. Yahweh Shai is going to crush everyone, man. All right. And he's going to save his elect. It says verse 14 back in the KJV. I have long time holding my peace. I have been still and refrained myself. Now will I cry like a travailing woman. I will destroy and devour at once. And this is why the prophet Habakkuk, you know, was saying in wrath, remember mercy, because he, he saw the Lord come back. 
All right, shooting out laser beams, man. Let's go to verse 3 in Habakkuk 3. It says, The power came from Teman, and the Holy One from Mount Paran, Selah. His glory covered the heavens, and the earth was full of his praise. All right? So Yahweh Shai is going to ride in on that father ship, man. All right? And, and these people, every eye shall see him. These people are going to be shook. All right? They're going to be in that copto. Remember, to beat one's breast for grief. Intense sorrow. It says, and his brightness was as the light. He had horns coming out of his hand. And there was the hiding of his power. And when you read it in the NLT, it says what? It says rays of light flash from his hands. Meaning what? They're laser beams from them chariots. That's what Yahweh Shai is going to be coming back with concentrated laser beam technology. All right. Just like they show you in War of the Worlds. All right. The scripture says, behold, he'll come with fire, right? With his chariots like a whirlwind. Isaiah 66. Let's get that. And then we can go back to Isaiah 19. Isaiah chapter 66, verse 15. For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind. Okay. Sometimes it's talking about clouds. Sometimes it's chariots. The so-called UFOs, I mean. Sometimes it's a whirlwind. Sometimes it's a wheel within a wheel. A flying roll, like in Zechariah. Or a mountain. All right. In Zechariah, the sixth chapter. Okay, it says to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh and the slain of the Lord shall be many. All right. So there's going to be a lot of people getting judged. They're going to be put to death when the Lord comes back. And we want to be on the right side when that happens, man. For giving us this truth. And may we endure unto the end. And like the scripture says, he that endureth unto the end, the same shall be saved. Okay. So let's go back to Isaiah 19. And I did want to get into uh, Matthew 24. So now you know what the swift, cloud, the swift cloud is talking about. Isaiah 19 and 1. Right. Behold, the Lord rideth upon a swift cloud and shall come into Egypt. All right. Modern day Egypt. America. Babylon the Great. <clears throat> and the idols of Egypt shall be moved at his presence And the heart of Egypt shall fail in the midst of it Yeah, all these false idols, man All these churches, these mosques, all of that It's going to get put down The carver stone The Lord's going to destroy all this shit And I will set the Egyptians against the Egyptians Yeah, the modern day Egyptians Okay, are these Edomites Alright, the power of the earth is, is in their hands The modern day Pharaoh is Esau all right, and you're seeing Esau coming up against Esau right now. The Lord's putting it in their minds for their kingdom to be divided. And no kingdom that's divided shall be able to stand. And I remember one time Elder Apostle Gobar was saying, this is what we got to be talking about more and more. Isaiah 19. Because this is exactly the time that we're in. The Lord said that there's going to be nation rising up against nation. You know? <clears throat> so that's biblical prophecy. It says, um, and they shall fight everyone against his brother and everyone against his neighbor, city against city and kingdom against kingdom. All right. So this is the time that we're in, man. All right. The Lord is, is pretty much stirring things up. All right. Having these people fight against each other. No kingdom divided shall be able to stand. All right. And in the midst of that, you know, and remember, this ain't going to, Yahweh Shai coming back ain't going to happen until Esau pushes out the mark of the beast. And we go through the hour of temptation because we need to pass the test in order to be saved. In order for this scripture to be fulfilled and to happen for the elect. Matthew chapter 24, verse 30. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Okay. So that's how the Lord's coming back. Power and great glory. He's going to cry like a travailing woman, right? And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. So the elect are going to be saved. What did the apostle Paul say? What then Israel have not obtained that which you seek it for? But the election have obtained it and the rest were blinded. So this is all about the elect. Yahweh Shai is only coming back to save the elect of the nation of Israel. All right. So, you know, I pray this was an edifying lesson, you know. 
Um, we can close out with one more. It's Daniel 12, and I know I mentioned it, but I want to read it just to close out. It's a good note to close out on this one. It's the, uh, look at that time at the end. That's, that's quite fitting for a title or a subheading. All right, this is Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. As we're coming to the end of this lesson, the time of the end. And at that time, all right, meaning what? We're at the end of this man's kingdom. All right, and Esau, just like the scripture says in the Apocrypha, 2nd Ezra 6 and 9, Esau is the end of the world. Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth, right? So Esau's done. He's going out, man. And at that time, shall Michael stand up? We spoke about that. The great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. And who are the Lord's people? Deuteronomy 7 and 6. The Israelites. First Chronicles uh, 17 and 21. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation. Even to that same time. Alright? So the time that's coming is going to be, you know, it's going to surpass any time of trouble that has ever existed on the earth since there was a nation, Right? And that hasn't happened yet. So this is a future prophecy that's about to happen. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered. Every one that shall be found written in the book, which lines up perfectly with the elect being saved. That we just read in Matthew 24 and 30 on down. So, yeah, this is the time that we're coming into. We want to hope that our names are written in the book of life, man. And that's it. You know, he that endureth unto the end, the same shall be saved. And on a day like this, as we, we throw up the uh, day of, you know, we uh, afflict our, our souls during the Day of Atonement. This is our high holy day, man, where we afflict our souls and we come to, to the Lord remorseful, you know, which which we're always supposed to be in that spirit anyway. We ain't supposed to be in that mirthed out spirit. We, we spoke on that earlier in the lesson, but at the same time, this is a specific day where we actually physically don't eat or drink anything and we afflict our souls, right, for 24 hours, man, you know. And that's, that's uh, uh, pleasing in the sight of the Lord, you know? We just read that in Psalms 34. Okay, so... <coughs> Lord willing, you were edified to the next time. I'm going to say Shalom.